Today we're going to look at a pretty interesting nth order linear differential equation. So in particular, we'll find the most general solution of the differential equation 2x minus the derivative with respect to x all to the n power acting on y equals zero. So in order to really understand what's going on here, let's wrap our heads around exactly what this notation is via some examples. So let's start with the n equals one case. You could do the n equals zero case if you agree that the natural numbers include zero, but I think that case is pretty easy. You just get y equals zero. So the n equals one case turns into two x y minus y prime equals zero. And so let's notice that as a separable differential equation. So that means we can perform separation of variables. So let's do that. We can write y prime over y equals 2x by moving some things around. And then we can take the antiderivative with respect to x of both sides. And that'll give us the natural log of y equals x squared plus some constant. We can exponentiate both sides and we'll get y equals e to the x squared plus a constant. But that's the same thing as e to the constant times e to the x squared. We can rename that e to the constant a constant and we'll have a constant times e to the x squared. So that would be our most general solution for this n equals one case. So now let's jump into this n equals two case and see what we get here. So for this n equals two case, we're looking at the differential equation two x minus the derivative with respect to x times two x minus the derivative with respect to x acting on y equals zero. So something like this. But now what if we kind of smash these last two terms together into something that I'll now, now call z? Then we see that z is a solution to our n equals one differential equation. So in other words, we have z is equal to some sort of constant times e to the x squared. I'm gonna call that constant c1 because now we have a second order differential equation. So the expectation is that we will indeed have two arbitrary constants. But now taking that yellow box, which defined our z, we can have a new differential equation for y. And that'll go like this. We'll have 2x minus y prime. So that's from the 2x times y and then the derivative with respect to x acting on y equals c1 times e to the 2x. Okay, so next up I'm gonna multiply by a minus sign and I'll absorb that minus sign into this constant so we won't see it on the right hand side. That'll leave me with y prime, sorry, this should have been 2xy, and then minus 2xy equals our constant times e to the x squared. So again, it's just a positive constant because we absorbed it into the previous constant. Now this is a first order linear differential equation and there are some nice solution techniques just to write down solutions of first order linear differential equations. In fact, if you're interested about differential equations in general, you should check out the second channel which is more devoted towards course material. Okay, so instead of using that formula which kind of destroys a lot of intuition, what we'll do instead is think about what we can multiply to this left hand side so that it looks like we've taken the derivative of a product of functions. And in fact, what works here is multiplying by e to the minus x squared. And we'll see why that works. Okay, so that's gonna leave us with e to the minus x squared times y prime, and then minus 2x times e to the minus x squared times y equals our constant c1. So notice it gets rid of that e to the x squared. But the really important thing here is to notice that this 2x, or really this minus 2x times e to the minus x squared, is equal to the derivative of e to the minus x squared. So that sets up a product rule type thing happening on this left hand side. We have e to the minus x squared times y prime. 
So that's equal to our constant C1. Now we can take the antiderivative of both sides. That'll leave us with e to the minus x squared times y equals a constant c1 times x plus a constant c2. Now we can multiply through by e to the x squared and we have y equals c1 times x plus c2 times e to the x squared. So let's see what we have over here. So in the case when n is equal to 1, we had a constant times e to the x squared. A constant is a degree 0 polynomial. In the case when n was equal to 2, we have a linear polynomial, degree 1 times e to the x squared. So I think that motivates us to have a nice guess for our general solution that it should be a degree n minus 1 polynomial times e to the x squared. That's exactly what we'll show in the next board. So now we're ready to finish this thing off. And so I've written it as a proposition. So if this differential operator, 2x minus the derivative with respect to x raised to the nth power operating on y equals 0, then y is equal to a polynomial times e to the x squared where the degree of that polynomial is n minus 1. So in other words, it's 1 less than this exponent right here. And we'll prove this by induction, but let's notice that our base case is done. So in fact, we can take this over here as our base case, the n equals 1 case, but that n equals 2 case provided us some motivation for how to make this guess in the first place. Okay, so next up, let's make an induction hypothesis. So in other words, we want to suppose for some k bigger than or equal to 1, we have y equals p of x e to the x squared is a solution to our differential equation. So 2x minus d by dx to the k operating on y equals 0. Okay, so next up, let's consider the larger differential equation. And so that'll be 2x minus the derivative with respect to x to the k plus first power operating on y equals 0. And now we'll take our k plus first power of our differential operator and factor it out, just like we did in the n equals 2 case. So this will factor as 2x minus the derivative with respect to x to the kth power, and then 2x minus the derivative with respect to x operating on y is equal to 0. Now we're going to fuse these last two objects together into a new variable. So I'll call that variable z kind of in line with what we did in our n equals 2 example. And so now let's note that we have the differential operator 2x minus the derivative with respect to x to the kth power operating on z equals 0. But that immediately tells us the form of z. And in fact, that tells us that z is equal to p of x times e to the x squared, where the degree of p of x is equal to k minus 1, and that's by our induction hypothesis. But now we can put this version of z, which was gained into our indu induction hypothesis, and set it equal to this thing, which is in terms of y. That'll give us something like this. So we'll have y prime minus 2x times y equals our polynomial p of x e to, the, e to the x squared. And here I've absorbed the minus sign into our arbitrary polynomial p of x just like I did before. So that's just to make this thing look nicer. Now we're going to do essentially the same thing that we did in our n equals 2 case, just kind of a bigger version. So we'll multiply both sides by e to the minus x squared. That'll leave us with e to the minus x squared times y all prime equals p of x. Great. Now let's take the antiderivative of both sides. So that'll give us e to the minus x squared times y equals um, p0 of x, where p where the degree of p0 of x 
is equal to k and the derivative with respect to x of p0 of x is equal to p of x. So in other words, p0 is an antiderivative of p. And notice it has the correct degree. The degree is k plus 1 minus 1 to finish our induction step. And the final thing that we would do is take this e to the minus x squared and multiply it over to this other side of our equation, leaving us with e to the x squared. And then we have y has the prescribed form. So I've done other interesting differential equations videos on the channel. There should be one on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.